Hey guys, uh, welcome to this new tutorial of Python in Grasshopper. I'm gonna try to recreate a script that I just lost because uh, somehow I, I made a mistake and um, it was a recursive script and it basically killed the computer. Uh, it crashed the Rhino and I lost some information. So I'm gonna just try to recreate it from scratch. Um, so I'm gonna start here. I have just already opened uh, Grasshopper. Um, I'm gonna start right into it. Um, it's gonna be a recursive aggregation script, so we're gonna create one geometry um, that I'm gonna build right now. Um, so I'm gonna create this geometry. I'm rotating one line of one unit in 60 degrees and then doing that again to create this shape. I'm gonna join that and then extrude the curve solid yes one unit right so this is going to be the geometry that we're going to be working with right also um so first um uh, let's start by kind of loading this brep into uh grasshopper so set one brep there we go we can hide this now and that as well so this is what we want to do right we're going to collect some of the information of the face and then eventually like orient this geometry as a, as a copy but then do that recursively so let's start by decomposing the surface mm. so decompose the brep then we get the faces list item there we go faces that's the list I'm going to use the face zero, which is probably this one. Yep. And then basically copy this a few times. So this is going to be the second one, and this is going to be the first one. So there I have three faces that I'm going to be working with. Then I'm going to basically decompose this again to get the edges, right? So if I copy this here, I can actually use the vertices list and say, okay, that's one vertice, um, two, three, one, two, and three, right? So I have, if I select all this, I have the four edges of one face. I would have to do the same thing for the other faces, but, um, gonna do it somehow differently and I'm also gonna get the this face I want the center right so these are the points that I need right uh, let's save this just in case we crash it so let's call this uh, recursive aggregation right um, so I'm gonna try to kind of build up a Python component that would actually do this right so collect all these points and merge them and give them to me in a list and this is per face right uh, so actually the result should be flattened right something like that so the let's try to create a python component that would do all that um, so we want to go into python right and we're gonna start by importing the Rhino script syntax that's okay we can also get rid of this variable and call this one bweb just to make sure that we have it correct um, I'm gonna probably need the reference of Rhino script just to make sure that we're kind of inputting the right command so you can do uh, look for that in the if you type edit Python script So, um, yeah, basically I just uh, been having some problems when I kind of call the Python um, module and I also call the Python script. So just before running the Python module, just open the edit Python script. That should bring this 
up front and then um, look into the Python help just to open this window just before right because we need this window to just uh, reference some of the documentation and then we can go into math and build our Python script again right just because I had a few issues right so um, So we're gonna. I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna just remove this variable and change this one into uh, the brep. That's all good. So let's start seeing what do we need first. We need to explode. Um, so let's look for explode. So polysurface, right? So this is the command that we want. Explode polysurface. So we're gonna say something like, uh, let's copy it actually, it's just easier. So I'm gonna copy that. And RS is gonna be our, and here B rep. So if we test this, uh, it works, so we could say, a equals just to start looking at what we're getting out of here so so this first operation we get it the same right we get the the untrimmed surfaces and like basically all the surfaces that compose this b-rep right so now I'm gonna have to pick one of these individual surfaces and start getting into the interior and getting some of the elements so I'm gonna do that it's slightly different um, so let's let's look at um, let's call this uh, all SRF right so these are gonna be all the surfaces right and we want to create basically a definition that would be all points um, that is gonna receive a surface right it's going to work with a surface and first we're going to just um, pick that surface and get the border edges right so let's look at border um sorry in search so duplicate surface surface border so this is another one that we're going to use so we're going to start with that uh rs duplicate surface border of the surface provided right so let's just um, try this by saying a equals all points we could just say return here just to be checking constantly if we're doing it the right thing so all points of, in this case, we want all surfaces. We're gonna select the first one of that list, right? So uh, you see that now we have a line and that line is highlighted there. So we basically have a polyline that determines the edge of that surface. So that's the first step. So let's call it this border equals that, right? We have the border, now we have to explode the border. Uh, so explode curves. Let's pick that and say um, lines. And this is going to be RS explode curves border. And let's say return. Lines. I like to kind of be checking constantly if I'm having any error. So you see that now out of that edge, we are getting four lines, individual lines in our list. That's good. So now out of each one of those lines, we want to get the endpoint. So do we have something like curve? 
let's just type that. end so there should be something like curve endpoint right so PTS um, so we have four lines here right so a point will be RS of a line right so we need to loop through the lines here and we're gonna do four L this is not a one it's an L or I could call it line but so let's call it line in lines we're gonna say PT is um, the point that we're gonna be working with so let's create all points is gonna be a new array so we're gonna say that all PTS dot append PT and let's give out the all points variable. Let's see. That's good. Now we are actually getting four points out of this operation, so uh, that's better. We are getting the four endpoints, and now we need one more, which is the first one, which is the centroid. So um, let's calculate it with a uh, curve area centroid, I think it's called, or just let's search for centroid. So curve area centroid, that's the one. So here we're gonna just do um, center equals RS curve area centroid of such surface. Right? And if you check the documentation, this returns uh, two elements. So we want to just say all points so the first element of the list is going to be the center so append center but here we need to specify that is the first one right? uh, we're having a problem oh we need to provide uh, I should have used surface area centroid. That should be. It. There we go. And we have the center, right? So, in a way, this is already doing um, everything that we did here, right? All this stuff, it's returning us the same. Points. I mean, the order here is not the same. Um, if we would want it to match, we could do so. But like for now, it, if we consistent with this data, we should be fine, right? So we're getting five points. The first is the center, and then going clockwise um, through the points. Um, so that's the first part of this. That's good. And you can see that if we select the surface number one here. We would get the same information of the second and surface number two, right? So we could call this point set one, and we basically have three sets. Uh, that's two and that's three. So this is zero, one, and two. Let's return for now i equals point set one. Just to visualize something. Right, so that's the first function. Um, the next one, um, we're going to basically aggregate, right? So I could actually get rid of, let's save it in case we have any problem, as I did already. So let's get rid of that. And we have our thing here, right? So let's look for a command that is called orient. 
So there's the command orient objects, and this is the one we want to use. Uh, and the orient command, it's really useful to kind of be reading this kind of documentation, right? So I'm going to just copy it for now, and then let's see what, what it what it says. Um, so I'm going to define a new function called aggregate. Oops. That's processing syntax. So ultimately what we want to do is orient this object, right? So we need to provide an object ID, which is the geo. So let's call this obj object to work with. Then we need to provide a reference and a target. So let's say that we're going to get a point set. Or, yeah. I'm going to call it point list just not to confuse it with our point set. Right? So I'm going to receive a point set. Um, and out of that, I'm going to figure out what to do and an object and I'm gonna figure out how to orient that object so the return this is gonna be a new object equals so sorry new object is gonna be the result of this operation we need to use the object to create it's gonna be here object and let's create this uh, source one and target one so what is the source? Uh, source, this is going to be a list of three points. So we need, we know that point list contains five points, right? So zero, one, two, three, four, that's the five points. So the source, we're going to always say that our point list element zero, it's going to be the center, so the pivot point. Um, and I'm going to make this a list already, comma, So this is my three points. I'm going to say one and two. That's the source. And if I put a target, a simple target, like exactly the same, oops. The target is going to be the same list, but inverted these two points, right? So we have source and target. Those are the commands. And let's return out of this the new object, right? And um, once we call this function, let's first check that we don't have a problem. Okay, that's good. So A is going to be the aggregation of BREP, which is the original geometry with point set one. And you see that what we're doing is basically orienting this BREP using this kind of information from this plane to a new target plane, which is kind of like the mirror operation, right? Um, so that's that's interesting. Um, let's look at a target, a variation of the target. So let's call this target two. So the same point we could say, well, um, why don't we use something like two and three? Let's see. And if we change the target to here, now that's inverted, so three and two. There we go. So you see that our geometry now can orient in this direction as well, right? So if we depending on the target that we use, we we can actually so what we call this one, and we say one is that, two is that. So that's good. Um, the system of control in order to create this aggregation, uh, it's, something, it's something that we could just develop further later. But like for now, I just want this kind of thing to work, right? So um, that's the second step. The last step, really, is to somehow this object uh, make a recursive version of this. So whatever we're doing um, with the original geometry, we're going to do it with the next one to create a new one. and do that to the next one and create a new one and so on right and you see that this is why like in a way 
Grasshopper would have been difficult to do so because you need all that kind of function, like all that kind of um, components that we had already just in order to kind of create a copy of one. And that will give you one result and eventually you want to do exactly the same to that one in order to kind of loop through that. So right now uh, this is kind of looking pretty clean for for a small uh, script that it's doing so, right? So let's define the recursive aggregation. So the recursive aggregation is going to be we are going to provide a, also an object. We're going to provide uh, generations and um, an object list, right? So, what do we want to do? We want to just start by aggregating. So, new object. gonna be so basically I'm gonna do all this stuff in the recursive aggregation now so I'm gonna start by saying cut this and put it here all surfaces are gonna be the exploded surfaces of the object point set it's gonna be the point set returning from this operation so we have that the same thing then the new object it's gonna be aggregate of the obj using point set one this could be changing like we could just create some rhythm for that and so I'm gonna just comment that out so right now what we're doing is just saying it's similar to what we had before but now we want to say if uh, generations is bigger than zero what basically call yourself with generations minus one right so we want to create this uh, use this new object that we basically aggregated with gens minus one and uh, the object list we haven't used yet, so but let's leave it here, right? So what is happening right now is that we are calling the we should call the function so a equals call the function, and here's where we make it start and we say b rep, and we say maybe three generations and then we need a list so let's create one so all b rep all new objects it's going to be an empty list just to store all the objects and then that's what we are putting in there and whenever we create a new object we append that object to the object list Right, so we aggregate this guy here and then we pass that to the next one and then eventually when we return the function we um, pass on the the list right let's test this okay this, this is working uh, it's not producing nothing interesting really but it seems to be working so the function it's saying the following let's go through it again Give me one object, that's the original B-Rep, right? Explode it, create different sets of points to, to use. We're not using all of them right now, but we might, right? Um, add a, aggregate a new object, so create this new variation of the object, uh, and add that to a list. And then if the generations is still over zero, uh, go back again, re uh, loop through you again. The problem with this kind of orient object is that um, it basically picks the object and, and moves it right so it, it, it doesn't really we need to make a copy of it so we're kind of just not storing all the movements that we're doing so let's do copy copy object and so we're gonna say here copy
copy object and the object that we're gonna copy is the new object right so what we're gonna store in the array is the copy and let's test that and, and you see that now we're actually getting that we're getting two um, but we get one and eventually when we're here we do the same operation to that same phase and then we go back to this one right so what we want to do is I mean it's actually working we could increase the number of generations right um, actually it would be nice to have a slider here that let's call these iterations with a slider right so let's not go so crazy with the number of them so I did 30 and then this is going to be an integer and we need to use that somewhere and this is going to be here iterations and you see that the number of objects that we're getting it's relative to the amount of iterations that we do right so let's first figure out how to make uh, this break the the cycle of looping in itself right so we want to create one so the first one is fine but the second one needs to be um, needs to go in a different direction right so let's why don't we create something like a count uh, so let's create a count we could use generations but generations will change all the time so let's use count equals zero and let's add that here and at the end we're gonna say count right and count here right so whenever we do the recursive aggregation we say count plus equals one right so we're basically knowing that we're starting on zero and we're doing um, let's first check that okay so what we want to change is that we might want to work with uh, different point sets right so what if we we say if count modulo 2 equals zero right we're gonna say this this is saying if if the count is a, it's an even number use points at one right else use new object is gonna be the aggregation with point set two right so let's let's try that and the rest should should stay right so let's say so Oh, so sorry. Count plus one. There we go. So, um, right, so we go to the first one and then we're using the different phase, and then we go to the next one and we use a different phase. So we're using the count to determine the way we are growing. So we should be able to kind of create, like, in this case, we're creating a loop anyway. Um, but we somehow broke the rhythm, right? Uh, so let's go back to this and let's see what else we can do. Um, we could, so we're using new point set, new point set here. We could also say something like, um, if you remember uh, the target one, this is a more simple way of looking at it, right? So when we're not looping like that, and you can basically recursively aggregate the geometry and then just bake it if you want, right? But basically, uh, I'm gonna leave it somewhere here. Um, there could be a lot of fun that you could have just by like, uh, let's say every three you switch from target one to target two, right? Um, you could do something like that by saying um, the aggregate function, where is it here? Um, could receive also the count just to know, 
just to be able to have some control. So the count goes here, and then would also have to go here, right? So you could say, well, if uh, count modulo three, this modulo is a good way of saying every three, right? Um, the new object is gonna be target one, else it's gonna be target two, right? So every three, we make a twist um, that creates something like this and yeah basically you could start playing like a lot just building all sorts of fun fun recursions also um, this could potentially branch and this is where I can definitely kill the system because the number of nodes would kind of um, increase exponentially so you could say well at this point I want to be able to create um, if it's zero you create two new objects right so I could say well if it's two new object two it's gonna be the aggregation of points set three right and then the copy two it's a copy of new object we can put that here so copy two if we if we create that one uh, we create a second copy and we could also put this here so in the case in which you only create one copy you do that here but if in the case that you have two copies you could say append those two uh, so this one now needs to go here so that's one case and this is another case and we could say well um, we could put all that if statement inside here right so if generations bigger than zero in this case and then also maybe in this case we can call it twice so but in this case we're going to create it with a uh, new object 2 right so let's see if this is not just going crazy. Uh, so we have a problem here. Where is it? Oh, I see. We don't have the copy one here, right? So copy one, copy two. Let's see. There we go. So what we're doing at this point is a bit more... So every other, we can grow in both directions, right? And obviously at this point we're going to start getting collisions and so on. But you could actually start creating some sort of branching system out of this. it was kind of cleaner when we were just opening one branch but um, you get the point uh, I hope that yeah let's see if there's any variation that we could do to this no, it seems pretty I mean I would leave it there just for you guys to play with but uh, maybe just leave the cleaner version where we had just one of them, right? So we could remove all this stuff.
right? Um, let's see. I think I broke it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not sure what I what I broke here. Right, we, yeah, I, I understand now. We actually did need those two versions, right? Um, where the new object from the beginning. Points at one and points at two. There we go. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, it really starts getting tricky at this point to just like follow up a little some of the things. But um, if you have some kind of new interesting results out of this system and want to share them with me, please do so. You'll see how we start kind of and create quite a interesting set of things here and yeah you could just go quite um, high if you don't do kind of branching um, you should be able to go quite far um, obviously when you use more of these it's, it's more difficult to kind of control them in real time if you first see that it's working and then you can just basically uh, send them then basically bake them. Yep. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this one. And um, I hope you liked it, and I'll see you guys soon.